We need to uh, continually bring our mind and our activities and thoughtfully um, study the scriptures and apply it to our life. So that why? So that what will be the result? The result will be the gradual elevation uh, to Krishna consciousness. If there is any discussion or questions, Lilananda Prabhu? You said, and I'm paraphrasing here, that if someone is not engaged in devotional service, he cannot be happy. And the material life is tightening and is becoming more and more uncomfortable. But sometimes we see, and I have met many people like this, not just a few, karmis that have a very balanced life, eat well, have the families are very together, the mm-hmm, children mm-hmm. are very educated, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, they experience some level of happiness. Mm-hmm. And some are religious, not necessarily Hare Krishna. Mm-hmm. And on the other hand, we see sometimes devotees that are constantly in anxiety, are always lamenting, complaining, families are disrupted, kids are not as well educated. So how do we understand that? Um, thank you very much for that question. It's a good point to be brought out. Oh, the re- Hiranyaka Shippu and many other persons in that line performed years and years and years and years, a hundred celestial years of austerity to gain the, po- the power that he accumulated to, you know, exploit everybody in the three worlds. So the, one of the re- but but the result of that austerity that he performed was very temporary. So Srila Prabhupada explains, he, not in this verse, but he, in, in many of his lectures, he says, actually, it's, a, it's hard work to go to hell. It's hard work. But it's not that hard work to um, try to develop one's devotional attitude and perform devotional um, activities which might seem like austerity. So in Brahma Samhita, in Brahma Samhita there's a verse that says, Yastvindra Gopa Matavendra Mahosva Karma Bandhanu Rupa Palabhajana Atanoti Karmadi Nirdahati Kintu Chabakti Bhajan. So that verse means that Krishna, for his bhakta, for his devotee, he burns up to the root burns up to the root the desire for sinful activities for material activities which are in the heart but for those who aren't his engaged in devotional service in whichever devotional attitude they might be expressing um, they're awarded the results of their activities as an um, in an impartial, he impartially awards them uh, good, pi- uh, good results for pious activities and suffering for the impious activities according to the chain of their previously performed work. Now, having said that, get a little bit more direct to your question. So, for someone who takes to the process of devotional service, <clears throat> oftentimes we do have the attitude that. Well, I'm a devotee, or I'm trying to become a devotee. Why am I suffering? I, you know, we have the conception that we can, you know, offer our obeisances to the Lord, chant Hare Krishna, however, with whatever degree of attention that we can muster, and whatever, take prasadam, and therefore all our problems should dissipate. But it's actually not that. It doesn't actually work that way. Krishna, but, but through the different difficulties that devotees, mm, the process of purification of devo- devotional service, the tendency to um, mm, act in material ways becomes lessened. So somebody might be, who, who might apparently, who might not be in devotional service, might be enjoying the results of pious activities. That's the material world. It comes, it goes, pious, impious, whatever the result and activities are, people are going to um, get the result of that impartially. But there, but that 
time, that space that they're so-called enjoying, it's very temporary. It's very temporary. And, and what's happening while they're enjoying, they're entangling themselves in the react actions and reactions of the fruit of activities that they're performing at that time in their so-called happiness or whatever. So, unless one cleanses the heart of the desire for material activities, one's continually going to be sometimes happy and sometimes in distress. And never always happy and never always in distress because it it's flows. It's always flowing, and the position, and the, the living entity's position in the material world is receiving the results of their pious activities and their impious, suffering the, their, the result of their impious activities, and the mixture is there. So, it would be, I think, I, I think um, the numbers of people in Krishna consciousness would be uh, much greater if it was a black and white world. But it's not black and white. It's uh, the resultant activities are mixed, so it's always in a mixture. But one should have faith, the foundational faith that I might be engaged in devotional service right now. I, I am engaged in devotional service right now, and I might be suffering. But the suffering that one occurs while performing devotional service is different than the result, the suffering or enjoyment that one enjoys while in the quote-unquote material world. Does that help? And so they might, they might be enjoying and, suffer, enjoying and they might have better educational facilities and their children are probably even better behaved. But, that doesn't, but that's not a sign of success. Unless real devotion develops in their heart, and we're not saying, I'm not trying to infer that there's no, no possibility of devotion outside of Krishna consciousness. I don't mean that either. But unless, real, unless they develop devotion for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the desire to enjoy the material benefits and suffer the, and not that anyone desires to suffer, but the result is they'll enjoy their material benefits for some time and then they'll suffer the result of their activities. That will continue to continually drag them to higher positions or lower positions. And even within devotional service, one, uh, one might be suffering different distresses and it's not that just because one is situated here that automatically their suffering is reduced or mitigated just by being in devotion. So one has to develop that attitude, that proper attitude of devotion. And in that way, Krishna will award the success of devotional service, which is pure love for him. And then, then there's Lord Chaitanya. Not, um, uh, uh, a, you can handle me roughly by your embrace or make me broken hearted. And that doesn't matter to me. You're my Lord, whether I'm suffering or not. You're my Lord in distress or happiness, whether I'm suffering or not. Because, again, the tendency is that I'll surrender to Krishna and everything will be just fine. Well, it will be in the long run, but not necessarily apparent, you know, the apparent thing. Kripa Sindhu Ji. I, uh, <coughs> thought I'd throw one thing in. I think we're speculating if we think everyone's happy out there and the kids are getting good education and everything's just fine and dandy. Yeah, I agree. In general, everyone's going to hell in a handbasket. They are. They are. Unless they surrender to Krishna. So thank you for bringing that up. We needed a little bit of that. Thanks. Stita D. Mooney, who? He was you know, and he was, um, and in that conversation, he was saying, how pious, uh, sinful, impious, it's all more or less different gradations of, of sinful, of impious. That's so what's true. the point of being pious if you're still sinful? That's our Stita Di Muni, because he wouldn't have gotten that name, Stita Di Muni, if he couldn't... I probably have a vested interest in Couldn't always think of something to say. 